Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another NBA mock draft. Uh, this one is fully scouted. We've got everything where it needs to be. The big board is locked and loaded. Uh, so make sure you stick around till the end of the video to see who your team picks or just see uh, my version of this year's NBA draft lottery. Also, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe button if you do enjoy at any point. Now, let's go ahead and get started looking at the number one overall pick in Jabari Smith Jr. At about 17 points per game, 7.4 rebounds, two assists, a block, two turnovers, shot at 43% from the field and 40% from three. Uh, the 6'10, 220 pound Smith was a stud this year for Auburn. He's really more of a big guard. He's got crazy length with a plus handle. Uh, he's got that KD-like scoring ability where he can just get into the mid-range, elevate over people with ease. Um, decent finisher on the offensive side of things. Uh, some of the things that he needs to work on. Forces, uh, not the greatest passer, and he's a bit of a ball stopper on offense, but overall, the Orlando Magic are going to be getting a stud here. They can maybe look to move on from Jonathan Isaac, but he's my number one overall prospect. I feel like at this point he's a consensus number one overall prospect. A lot of people like Jabari Smith Jr., and so will the Orlando Magic. Now at number two, we have Chet Holmgren going to the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder just adding talent to that young squad right now. So many picks over the next few years. But Holmgren brings to the table a 7-foot, 194-pound frame, which is one of the most intriguing in the draft class. 14 points a game, 10 boards, 2 assists, 3.7 blocks, shooting at 61% from the field and 39% from 3. Uh, he's a great rim protector. He's a lob threat. He's got a great face-up game. Um, obviously a good shooter, 40% from three almost, and he, he goes coast to coast very nicely. Now the big thing for him is his frame and his strength, uh, but still Oklahoma City is going to get a guy that they can continue to develop to fit their timeline. Whenever they're ready to you know, start contending, he will be ready. Uh, that's just my best fit for both him and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now at number three, we have Paulo Bancaro, who recently – did a draft interview with Houston. He said that he really liked it. Uh, he really likes Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, said those guys both want to win. Uh, Bancaro averaged 17 points a game, 8 rebounds, and 3.2 assists, as well as a steal and a block this year, shooting at 48% from the field and 34% from three at Duke. At 6'10", 250, he's a Mack truck coming down the paint. Uh, in some of his pros, he's got a strong frame, great size to him, got a nice face-up game, an NBA arsenal. Uh, very high potential, and he's a three-level scorer. Uh, some of his cons, he forces at times. Doesn't really care about defense too much, and effort can at times be lacking. Uh, but still, I really like Paulo Mancaro. That, those are correctable errors um, that you can work on once he gets to the league. At number four, we got the Sacramento Kings going out and getting Jaden Ivey. Ivey's going to be more of a two-guard, more of a secondary playmaker when he gets to the NBA, and I see that fitting in very nicely in Sacramento alongside the Aaron Fox, averaging 17 points a game, five boards, three assists, one steal, shooting at 46% from the field and 36% from three. He looks like, you know, and not only uh, his stats, physically, he looks like John Morant a lot. His game looks a lot. Uh, it's scary how much he looks like John Morant with his slashing ability and finishing above the rim. Uh, however, he did get cold. At the end of the year, he needs to calm down sometimes. Uh, but yeah, Jaden Ive will be a great pick to Sacramento there at four. At five, we have the biggest mystery of the draft. Shadon Sharp going to the Detroit Pistons to team up with Cade Cunningham. I think it's a win-win. Uh, 22 points per game, six boards, three assists in his last EYBL run. On 60% shooting, he was the number one overall recruit in the class of 2022. Of course, reclassed. And that's the big thing. He's a great athlete. He's got great size and length at the two-guard position, and he's a great finisher, decent three-point shooter. He's just unknown. Nobody really knows this guy, but I think bringing him into Detroit and pairing him up with Cade Cunningham, that's going to be a great duo for a long time to come. With the number six overall pick, we are going to have the Indiana Pacers on the board as we transition over here to Fanspo for the rest of this lottery mock draft. Uh, but we got the Indiana Pacers here. And when you look at the Pacers, they really need some offense and some depth in the front court. Uh, Isaiah Jackson, good defender, not really much of a scorer. Same thing here with Miles Turner. Jalen Smith, a decent scorer. Um, but I'm going to have him go out and get Keegan Murray, 6'8", sophomore power forward from Iowa. 
I mean, he averaged 23.5 points a game last year, nine rebounds on pretty good efficiency. Uh, so, yeah, Keegan Murray he is going to the Indiana Pacers. At seven, we have the Portland Trailblazers. And this is a spot that the Trailblazers could trade out of, of course, trying to build a competitive roster around Damian Lillard. So if they don't trade out, if they say here, a good mock trade for them would be like um, hitting up the Thunder and saying here, we'll give you um, give you seven. If you give us 12 and you give us back, maybe Lou Dort. Uh, that would be a good trade. Thunder will probably consider that considering they want more blue chip prospects. Uh, but for now... We're going to have the Portland Trail Blazers taking this pick here at 7, and we're going to have him go Johnny Davis. Uh, he is the most NBA-ready player on the board. It's, it's, a lock, or it's a tie between him and Matherin. I really like Matherin right now. Uh, but Johnny Davis here at 7 to the Portland Trail Blazers, staying in the red, white, and black, and averaging 20 points a game, 8 rebounds, great defense, really took all the shots for his team this year at Wisconsin. Uh, so Johnny Davis is going to the Portland Trailblazers. At 8, now we have the New Orleans Pelicans. This is a spot where I would like to take Dyson Daniels for them uh, at 6'6", six, six, but there's reports coming out, you know, Dyson Daniels probably going to be more of a secondary playmaker. He might not play the point guard position. So in that case, with the next best point guard being Ty Ty Washington, that's a reach at 8, maybe a trade back. There's another spot, you know, New Orleans could trade out of. Uh, maybe pick up a Lou Dort if Shadon Sharp's still on the board here, uh, if the Thunder want to swoop in on that. Um, but right now we're going to have the Pelicans again stay in here, and I'm going to have him go out and get Benedict Matherin. He's going to come in, and he's going to be that backup two guard to C.J. McCollum, and he'll probably be able to play right away from day one at the two if C.J. plays over at the one. Another guy I'm a huge fan of here in Matherin. Can really score the ball, plays great defense, 18 points a game, six boards. He looks really good. Uh, especially stepping in and not having to be the superstar right away. He can just kind of develop and be uh, a secondary guy for this Pelican squad. Now at number nine, we have the San Antonio Spurs, and they need a big. Uh, they got Pirtle, but Collins, Kaycock, and Landell, there's not really much you're working with there. Um, so here at nine, we're going to have them target the big man out of Memphis. At 6'10", uh, the freshman Jalen Duren is a stud. Like he didn't really average too many points. 12 points, 8 rebounds. Very efficient, but he's a great defender. Can really get up and down the court. Super athletic. I mean, I've said it a bunch of times. If this was like the 1990s, he'd be the number one overall pick by a long shot. So we're going to have the Spurs go out and get Jalen Dern. At 10, we have the Washington Wizards. And I'm going to have them go out and get uh, Dyson Daniels. Because I feel, I know I said there's reports that he might not play the point guard spot. But anybody that has, anybody that's ever played point guard before, uh, which Dyson Daniels has, could be better than whoever in the world would start for the Wizards day one. So that's why I'm going to have Daniels here. There's no way I think he falls out of the top ten, uh, probably not even out of the top eight. Uh, but Daniels there, he provides good height, good defense, decent playmaking, um, a good frame. So that's what uh, you're picking off of there at 10 for Washington. At 11, we have the New York Knicks, and we're going to have to have them take the best player on the board right now, and that is going to be A.J. Griffin out of Duke, the 6'6 freshman. Um, he was pretty efficient this year, uh, super efficient, almost 50% from three. Uh, you know, not the greatest scorer, not the best athlete or defender, but he's got a very, very high floor, something the Knicks can go in, get a guy that can play day one, and also has a very high ceiling, uh, so that's what we're looking at here with A.J. Griffin coming out of Duke to the Knicks at 11. 12, this is the Oklahoma City Thunder. This is probably a spot that they're going to look to trade out of. But for now, unfortunately for me and my Hornets, I'm going to have the Thunder going out here and getting Mark Williams. Um, Sohan, I've got him at 18 on my board. Mark Williams, I've got him at 12. Uh, this is not my updated custom draft board, by the way. But I'm going to have them go out and get Mark Williams. Stands about 7'2 with shoes on. They need some some front court guys again. This is a spot they could probably move up from. Uh, in that case, it's good for my Hornets, who <laughs> want a center. But Mark Williams, who averaged 11 points, 7.5 boards last year, super efficient, didn't play the most minutes in the world. Uh, but, yeah, Mark Williams is going to be a stud here for the Oklahoma City Thunder, where he will get time to grow and develop. Now, with Williams being off the board, 
the next best guy fit wise for my Hornets would be Ochai Abaji. Um, a great defender and a good scorer at 6'6", the senior out of Kansas. He's ready to come in, and he's ready to win now. 19 points per game, five boards, decently efficient. I think, you know, with his length, he's got great defense on the ball, and he can shoot the three ball. I think he's going to be everything the Hornets could ask for there with the 13th overall pick. And he's going to come in, give us some more wing depth. Book Knight's going to be more of the scorer. He's going to be more of the defender and three-point shooter of our young guards. At 14, with the final pick in the lottery here, we're going to have the Cleveland Cavaliers going with Malachi Branham. I've got him at 13 on my board, so this will be a nice pickup for them. Uh, 6'5", freshman out of Ohio State. I mean, he's a great scorer. 14 points per game, but he didn't really start shooting. Um, really, he didn't get handed the keys to the offense till about midway through the season, and he really exploded. 50% from the field as well. If he doesn't have a good game, it's not really because he shot bad. Uh, it's just because he didn't take that many shots. So Malachi Branham here is going to be going to the Cleveland Cavaliers with a 14th pick to round out the lottery. So now with the 15th pick and my Charlotte Hornets once again, I don't think we end up taking this pick here. It would really surprise me because, you know, at this point with Williams off the board uh, and Branham off the board, we got Agbaji at 13. There, I mean, we could go Ty Ty Washington, which is what I think I'm going to have us go here. Because our backup point guard spot, it's not very solidified. Um, Isaiah Thomas probably on the way out. So we can pick up Ty Ty. That's what I'm going to have us do here. But I think in reality, this pick will not be made by the Charlotte Hornets. I see us trading it. This pick or 13, whichever one. I think we make at least one pick, though. Um, now, at 16, for the Atlanta Hawks, I'm going to have them go and get another playmaker. Um, another score. He can also play some pretty good defense. And Jalen Williams. Um, he is not very high on this draft board. Um, but, let's see, where is he? There he is. At number 83 down here. Goodness gracious. But we're going to go out and pick him up um, for this Hawks squad because, I mean, they could use another score. Uh, can play the two or the three at six foot six. Gallo can shift down. Wouldn't be surprised if he's on the way out soon. The Hawks are probably going to make some moves during the draft with their roster. We'll see how that shapes out, though. But right here, we're going to have them taking Jalen Williams, the junior, out of Santa Clara. At 17, now we have the Houston Rockets. And I'm going to have them take EJ Liddell, uh, get another big man for him in that rotation. Um, it was either Liddell or Sohan. And actually, yeah, I'm going to have them take Sohan. Sohan, um... Much more potential and somebody that the Rockets could use. You know, they've picked up Paulo Bancaro at three. Um, they have another first-round pick now from the Christian Wood trade, so they're going to go out and get another big man. Um, they can play defense. Yeah, they're going to have a young front court, but picking up Sohan, a guy that has a lot of potential versatility on the defensive side of things, maybe they can make him into something on the offensive side. Now here at 18, we have the Chicago Bulls, and I think I'm going to have them... I'm going to have him go out and get Tari Eason to bring in some more wing depth. Best player on the board right here. And at six foot eight, he's a stud. There are some character basketball IQ issues, concerns that teams are uh, looking into right now, which is why he does fall all the way to 18. But at 18, the Bulls go ahead and pick him up. Now, at number 19, uh, let's see. What do the Timberwolves need? I'm going to have him go out and get my best player on the board here in EJ Liddell. I know he's a 6'7 power forward, uh, but he can shoot the three ball. He can play good defense, and I think picking him up, that would be a nice addition to this Timberwolves squad. 6'7, 240, um, can play, probably going to play the four at the next level. Probably not going to be able to play the three, but 19.5 points a game. That's good value there at pick 19. Now at number 20, we have the San Antonio Spurs. I'm going to have him go out. I know Spurs fans don't want him, but I'm going to have him go out and get Nikola Jokic. I meant Nikolajovic, not Jokic. Uh, the other um, possible option here is Vince Williams Jr. But yeah, I'm going to have the Spurs go out and get Nikolajovic here. 6'10", all kinds of potential. I think something that Greg Popovich could really unleash uh, and that he would love to have there in San Antonio. 21, the Nuggets, the first of their two first-round picks now. And they, they have the luxury of being able to kind of take best player available, which is what they're going to do here as I'm going to have him go out and get the guy I was just talking about 
in Vince Williams Jr. out of VCU, the 6'6", 205-pound senior. He is a bit older, but I think, man, this kid, he can play. I think he's one of the biggest sleepers in this draft. The Nuggets getting him at 21, that's a steal right there. Even though he is a bit undersized at 6'6", 205 pounds, that makes up for it right there. Now at 22, we have the Memphis Grizzlies picking once again, and I'm going to have them go out and get a point guard um, as the insurance policy for if Tyus Jones does decide to walk. Uh, so looking at what's left in the point guard uh, slot, not much. Um, so I'm going to have to go down here and find him. There he is, Andrew Nimhart, a guy that's really been impressive ever since you know the draft combine really impressed there. And I really liked him. He shot up my board. He's up to number 24 on my board. They're going to pick him up here at 22 just for an insurance policy, and then they can get somebody else at 29 that can help him win as well, maybe like a 3 and D type guy. So Andrew Nimhard to the Memphis Grizzlies there at number 22. He is a senior as well, one of the older guys in this draft class, but I really, really like him. He's real smooth, uh, great in the pick and roll. Andrew Nimhard would be an instant impact player for that Grizzlies squad. Now at number 23, we have the Philadelphia 76ers. And looking at who's still on the board, I'm going to have them go out. Man, this is tough because, you know, they could take Bouchamp, I believe is how you say it. He would help them out a lot. Another Matisse Thibel like player. Uh, but I'm going to have them go out and take the high swing, uh, the high risk, high reward pick here in Osmond Dieng. 6'10, 205 pounds out of France. Can really shoot the ball. He really came on towards the end of the year. Uh, for his team he was asked to play a bit larger role and man did he answer the bell early on he was terrible played his way into a first round uh, lottery oh not lottery but played his way into a first round uh, draft pick and I think he has the potential to be a Giannis type guy speaking of Giannis we're on the Bucks now and that's where I'm going to have Marjan Bouchamp fall to at 6-7 does a little bit of everything great defender and I feel like he would fit right in with this Bucks squad of course, you could have him go with a center, but really not too many good options on the board there. Maybe just go to free agency to pick up a center. Uh, so Marjan Bouchamp going to the Milwaukee Bucks there at 24. 25, we have the Spurs yet again. Go out and get Jake LaRavia. Um, I know he's number 81 on this board, but after like the guys I sorted out, it's just by name. Um, so LaRavia, he's listed as a power forward. I see him more as a guard wing type guy at 6'8", 6'9", um, 235 pounds. The junior from Wake Forest put up a pretty good stat line this year. Super efficient, and I think he would be great on a team like the Spurs. He just kind of rubs me as like a Spurs type guy, you know, like a bigger, um, not as athletic, but crafty and can get to his spots and knock down his shots. Uh, so Jake Laravia there going to the Spurs. Now we have the Rockets at pick 26, and this is where it gets interesting because I don't really know who they're going to go get. Um, they've taken Sohan and Paulo Bancaro. That's a couple of nice options there. So now I think they go out and get Jaden Hardy. Um, another shooting guard from the G League Ignite. It worked out last year, and Hardy was a top three consensus draft pick coming into the year. Had a terrible year. <laughs> Let's be honest, a terrible year. Um, and at 6'4", 190, Hardy could come in to this Rocket squad and, you know, battle with Josh Christopher for some backup minutes. Um, but he does have some flashes of being a stud. He did play better towards the end of the year, so that's what the Rockets will be banking on here with the 26th overall pick. 27, we have the Miami Heat. I'm going to have the Heat go out and get Kendall Brown, another guy that can really defend the basketball, and, you know, his offense can just come along. But at 6'8", 205, the 19-year-old freshman was a really, really good defender for the Baylor Bears this year. A part of the best defense in the country. Uh, so that's why I'm going to have him going at 27 to the Miami Heat. I think he would fit into that culture right away. 28, we got the Golden State Warriors, who yet again have a first-round pick. And who are they going to spend it on? That becomes the question. I think it's going to be Wendell Moore Jr. Um, I really started to like Wendell in the draft process. Let's see, where is he at? There he is. Um... 6'6", six, six, junior from Duke, 21 years old, 213 pounds, added some weight while he was at Duke, averaged 14 points a game. He's a three-level scorer and a good defender. I think he would fit in with this Golden State Warriors team very, very well. He's used to playing off the ball because at Duke they had such a stacked roster. He didn't get, you know, the number one or even probably the number two amount of touches. So getting him 
He's used to playing off the ball. I think he would fit in nicely in Golden State. Now, once again, we have the Memphis Grizzlies back up. We're going to have the Grizzlies go yet again with another overseas guy, um, just like they did at the end of the first round last year. This time, Gabe, I, I'm not going to try to say it. You can see it right there. That's his name. Coming in at six foot seven, just under 200 pounds. A knockdown shooter. I mean, the Grizzlies could use another one of those guys. Good length, can play some defense. Not the most athletic in the world, but Pro, Pro Kaida? Yeah, I'm definitely not saying that right. But I feel like he would fit in very nicely with this Grizzly squad as they continue to develop their young guys as well. They do a very good job of that. Now at 30, the final pick in this first round belongs to the Denver Nuggets. And I'm going to have them go out and get an insurance guy for if Monte Morris is goes on the way out. Uh, Composo is also a free agent, so maybe they need some more point guard depth this offseason. And I feel like he's a guy that you can't let slip to the second round because, I mean, he's he's a team player type guy, can play defense, very athletic. We're going to have them take the six foot seven, 195-pound sophomore guard out of Arizona in Dale and Terry. I feel like he'd be a nice fit here. Only eight points, but he's a great passer, can help set up uh, like Jokic and guys like that. He's pretty efficient as well, just doesn't take that many shots. So I feel like he would be good to come in, and he's used to playing off the ball, but he can also facilitate in the pick and roll and pass as well. So Dale and Terry at 30 to the Denver Nuggets. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. But yeah, that's going to be my full first round mock draft. Let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comments below, like I just said. Make sure to like button and subscribe button if you did enjoy it at any point. Also, uh, thanks so much for making it this far into the video. If you watched it this far into the video, you're a real one. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.